my name is Moisés. I'm from, from Brazil. This is my second time here in Prague. First time as a visitor, now as speaker. And this presentation, I'll talk about a Python module that I made up. I'll talk a little bit about myself. My name is Moisés Guimarães de Medeiros, a big name, but Brazilian name. I'm a software engineer at Wolf SSL right now, and I'm also a professor at the Federal Institute in Brazil, where I teach high students, uh, high school students, and graduate students how to program. My background, I have a technologist degree in web development and a special, specialist degree in security. And when I'm not coding, I'm playing some music, playing some games, or doing some sports. And this work I'll present is a module made by Wolf SSL. This company was founded in 2008, 2004. Back, we had a SSL implementation in C++. It was used by MySQL. And then we got rewritten to C language for embedded devices. The company was rebranded to Wolf SSL in 2013. We now have 26 employees and 18 engineers. We are spread all around the world. We have, most of our guys are in the US, but we have people in Japan, Brazil, Australia, and now we are hiring people in, in Europe as well. And we have secured over 2 billion connections, and we have a lot of customers using our products right now. So, I will talk about WolfCrypt. WolfCrypt in the C level is a, li a lightweight C library. It's the core engine used by WolfSSL to encrypt and decrypt data. As WolfSSL is the protocol, protocol uh, layer of our product, WolfCrypt is the crypto engine. It's widely used by the IoT market and also available for desktop and the cloud. So we are basically everywhere we can port to. And we are famous by our small size, mostly. So encrypting is all about secrets. Um, I have a bunch of secrets. Who else does have secrets here? OK, so let's keep them safe, yes. And in the beginning, so how did people start to protect secrets? It's like in the ancient, there was two basic techniques. Transposition, where you switch the position of the letters inside the message. So we have this it's kind of rod, and then you wrap it around with uh, a stripe of letter, and then we, you write your message. When you roll out the, the cord, the letters will have changed place. And depending on the diameter of the, the rod, the message will not fit if you have to have the same diameter to roll up again and read the message. And we have substitution. When you take one letter and replace it by, the other, by another letter, one of the most famous ciphers, known as the Caesar cipher, where you exchange letters from like A will turn to D. The, the key is three letters forward. And then to decrypt, you would move three letters backwards. But nowadays, uh, basic substitution is most used like raw 13, just to avoid um, spoilers. And nowadays, we have evolved in the crypto solutions. And it gets pretty much complicated. In Brazil, we, have, we use WhatsApp a lot. Is it famous here in, in Chinese Republic? Yes, as well? OK. So we started getting this message. All the messages you send in this chat and calls are now secured with end-to-end -end cryptography. And most of people don't know what is cryptography. I've, I've heard people saying, oh, your messages are now encrypted. You must be careful. The government is watching you. And that's not the case. 
the encryption is there to protect you. So, we have basic principles on how to get information safe. So, we need confidentiality. So, if Alice wants to send Bob a message, the confidentiality will guarantee us that Charles, that is not allowed to, to read the message, that he can eavesdrop on the message. So, it protects against unauthorized access. All the people that should have access to the message can have access, and other people that doesn't have the rights cannot access. We call this confidentiality. Integrity. It serves to ensure that the message has not been changed. So it's very important that the message the receivers get is the same message that was sent by the sender. So we must make sure that the message was not changed during the during the, the way to, to the receiver. And also, authenticity. We must make sure that when Bob, Bob receives a message, that that message was really sent by Alice and not by someone else trying to impersonate Alice. So it verifies the sender's identity. So to break this down in modern crypto, we have now a basic explanation of cryptography algorithms. So we have symmetric key algorithms. At symmetric key means that the same key is used for both encryption and decryption of the message. So we have on the left side the clear data. It gets encrypted using only the key. And then we have a cryptogram. This cryptogram can be sent by email, letter, internet, any possible way. And in the other side, the receiver will use the same key and the cryptogram to achieve the clear data. Is that okay, see? Questions? Okay. So, also in symmetric key cryptography, we have two modes to basic modes of encryption. We have block encryption that gets a message, break it, breaks it into a lot of blocks of the same size and encrypts each block separately. And then we have um, I have a translation problem right now. <laughs> Stream ciphers, yes. <laughs> I speak Portuguese uh, native, my native languages, and sometimes you get a twist in the brain. Okay, and stream ciphers, it produces byte by byte. For it, then you get a stream of bytes that you can shore to your message, so you can encrypt it. So in block ciphers, here we have the plain text break it into blocks of the same size, and this is this mode of cipher is called electronic codebook or ECB mode. This was the first one used, and it has been proved to be not good one to use because. If we try to encrypt an image using ECB, we'll see that the same blocks, they produce the same output. So in an image, you can see, you cannot see the, the, the original picture, but you can take some information out of it. So we can tell that this is a penguin in the picture in the middle. This, this picture in the, in the right is if you use any other method other than ECB. Then we have the CBC mode. We break the plain text in blocks of the same size, but then we use an initialization vector. Then this vector gets a short operation with the plain text, goes through the block cipher encryption with the key, and then it produces a cipher text. Then this cipher text is used again as the initialization vector of the next encryption block. So then, the same pieces of plain text now will produce different ciphertext blocks, because you have uh, a different initialization vector for each block. Okay? 
And also we have the counter mode. Well, you don't actually use the plain text as an input to the cipher. In this case, you will use a random number plus a counter, and then you upgrade the counter until the length of the, the message. And then you cipher each block, creating a, a different output of the encryption for each one. And then you short it with the plain text to get the cipher text. Nowadays, the most used um, block mode is known as the GCM, Galois counter mode. And this is an example. Try to make it bigger. OK. So here we have AES is the American encryption standard. I'm using CBC mode, importing them from WolfCrypt ciphers. And then I'll create a cipher with AES. And then I'll have my key, my big secret key, the mode, and an initialization vector. So now I can get the cipher text out of the cipher, running an encrypt operation, passing my original message. So now I have my cipher text right here this line. And to reverse it back, I can use the same key. So I can use the same cipher. So if I do cipher decrypt, passing it the cipher text, I will get my original message back again. I implemented all the ciphers following the, the, the path for symmetric ciphers. Zoom out. OK. So symmetric key cryptography, it's very fast. But there's one big problem. We need to share the private key. And there are a lot of, of solutions on how to solve that. But in the end, you will need a safe way to deliver the key to everyone that must have the key. But in the other side, we have the asymmetric key cryptography, they use a pair of keys, a public and a private key. And everybody has its own private key. The private key is only known by its owner. That's why it's called private key. And derived from the private key, you get a public key. And as public key, this key can be shared with everyone. You can make it public. There's no problem of people knowing your public key. Because all the data encrypted with the public key is only possible to decrypt it with the private key. Oops. Yes. So if people want to send me information, they will encrypt this information with my public key. So the only person that could open this cryptogram is me that have the private key. So here we have confidentiality. If you send a message, only I can open that message using my private key. I can take the cryptogram, decrypt it, and get the clear text. <coughs> the reverse operation, if I use the private key instead for in the encryption operation, I will have a sign operation. So I can get any data that I want to sign, and I run it through the signing method with my private key, and I'll get a signature. And everybody that possesses my public key, that is a public key, so everybody has access to it, it's able to verify the signature. So it will feed the verifier with the signature and the public key, and it will return to the clear text, to the clear data or the original message. So we can achieve both confidentiality using the public key to encrypt, or authenticity 
using the private key to sign some data. You have an example? Look, this is the size of the private key compared with the symmetric key. We have a very big key. That's why asymmetric encryption and encryption is way more expensive in resources for the machine than symmetric. So we have this big private key here where I create my, my private key. And then I have the public key where I create the public key object. Then I'll get my plain text. Everybody gets Friday off. And I'll cipher it with my public key. So I call here public encrypt plain text. I will get this cipher text. And this cipher text is only, <coughs> sorry. I can open the cipher text only with the pair key. So I ciphered encrypted it with the public key. I can only decrypt it with the private key. So I call private key decrypt the cipher text so I get back to the everyone gets Friday off. That was my original message. The signature process, my signature will be my private key signing my plain text. So I'll get my signature down here. And with my public key, I can verify that signature. So I call pub.verify, pass in the signature, and I get back to the original message. The limitation is that the size of the message must be at most close to the size of the key. So we cannot use it for any size of message, There's some limitation. While with symmetric algorithms, we can have more flexibility. Hash functions are like baby steps for hash functions, like basic math. We use a lot of modulus, line, modulus 9 for checking a number. But cryptography safe hash functions, it gets a clear data through a hash function. Then you produce, produce a digest of that message. As the digest has a fixed length, we have a inf infinite possibilities of clear message, but we have a finite number of digests. So at some time, we will have collisions. So to be a good hash function, cryptography, cryptographically good hash function. It has to be easy to calculate, so it has to be, it can, has to be fast. Infeasible to guess the message from its hash. So you get a hash, you cannot tell what was the original message provided by that hash. Infeasible to modify the message without modifying ma the, the hash. So every little change to the original message should produce a big change to the, to the hash. And it should be hard to find two different messages with the same hash. That will be a collision. I have a table to compare hash functions. So we have SHA-1 that is now being deprecated, and the SHA-2 family with SHA-256 and SHA-512. And you can see that the size of the, the digests is according to the size of the key, size of the hash, and how bigger the hash is, and then it gets harder to get collisions. Now we have available on the internet I mean, a lot of databases for MD5. They, we call it rainbow tables. If you go there, put some word like banana, it will give you the hash for banana. If Actually, the, the reverse order. If you put the hash for some common word, it will already know which message is there. So it's easy to find the original message from its hash for MD5. So it's no longer safe. So here I have a hash example. I have these hash modules in WolfCrypt, and I have import char. 256 
and I'll create my object with s where equals shadow 56 and I'm feeding it with wolf and then crypt I can break the the message and the digest of my message is this stream of bytes and I can also have the hex digest method that returns as a hex string this hash module was also um, made following the, the, the PEP guidelines for hash functions. And from hashes, we have also hashed max, or hash message authentication codes. <clears throat> when you don't have, when you have not only the clear data, the original message, but you also use a key on the function. So you get the message, goes through the hmac function, and then you provide it with a key. And then the hash, the result of it, will have some kind of authentication because only I know the key and only the receiver also should know the key. So only the owners of the key could produce that hash. So in my hmac example, I have to initialize my object with a secret key. So I can update my, my hash with wolf and then crypt, and then I get my digest or my hex digest as I would like to use it. But in all my examples, I use very easy to to remember keys or initialization vectors, but one important thing about security encryption is the random numbers. We should always be using random numbers for keys, not using easy words for keys, and not reusing the same keys for messages. So it's a good practice to use random numbers. But then you need a good source of random numbers. Those are called cryptographically safe uh, random, number, random number generators. So we have one in WolfCrypt, and it provides both byte, random bytes and random um, list of bytes, array of bytes. So you can get one by one, or you can get a bunch of random bytes. Yes? I, I can't hear you from here. I should get you the microphone. OK. Yeah. Uh, who was asking the question? Yeah. Uh, why don't you uh, use the uh, cryptographically safe uh, generator, which is uh, present in the Python standard library Sorry? for this? In, in Python standard library, there is a uh, uh, a random number uh, oh, yes, yes. generator which is cryptographically safe. So why don't you use this? Why, oh, uh, why there is uh, another one in? This is just another option. Okay. You can also use the, the, the random provided by the Python language. But WolfCrypt is a, is a Python wrapper around the C library. So I okay. wanted to export all the functionality okay. from the libraries. Okay. So if you're running in an environment that the random is not um, available, then you have a, a new option. At this moment, to install WolfCrypt, I need to both install the C library first, so you can clone the C library from our GitHub repository. Then just autogen, configure it, enable SHA-2512, make and install the library in your machine. And then you can install WolfCrypt using pip. OK? If anyone knows how to install the C library within the pip, please talk to me later. <laughs> With time, I have five minutes. I have five minutes. Oh, that's good, because the, the complete documentation is here. 
at wolf, wolfssl.github.io slash wolfcrypt dash python. And as I have five minutes, we have a lot of time for questions. One question. Yeah, good. We have one question on the Slido, but I will give you the mic so you can ask away right away. Yeah. Okay. It, is it yours? Okay, so we will get to you. We have enough time. So the first question is uh, What can you say about smart naming tools, ML inspired, e.g., the suggest name during coding, or even refactors the wall code for better comprehension? Smart naming tools. But it's okay. So Different the next room, yeah. one, why should I use WolfCrypt EG for hashing if there is Python standard library hashing module? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes, there is Hashlib for Python. So WolfCrypt is like when you don't have access to other options, you can use WolfCrypt as we are, our main, fo main focus is for IoT. So if WolfCrypt is present in your platform, and Hashlib is not present, you can use it. Uh, I have one, one of my students working on a paper to compare speed of Wolf, WolfCrypt and Hashlib, and also different solutions like cryptography, and I think it's PyCrypt, the other one. And also based on the standards, following the PAP guidelines, um, I'm not sure if the hashlib follows all the, the guidelines <laughs> for hash functions. But that will be on the result of the paper. Okay, thank you. And yeah. Actually, similar question to the one about hashlib, but what's the advantage of um, WolfCrypt compared to PyCrypto? Is it the speed or something else? Over PyCrypto, um, I haven't do the comparison of them, of all of them yet. But it's mainly, you have we follow the, the the PEP guidelines. We have hardware acceleration options for our C library. So, in, depending on the architecture, you can get um, better performance using our solution. I'll be right there. And uh, what was your primary target architecture? Sorry? What was primary target architecture, like ARM or? Oh, OK, I tested both on my computer and in my Raspberry Pi. OK, thanks. The last question, OK. Hi, uh, great talk. Uh, I just wanted to ask, can we use uh, WolfCrypt from uh, MicroPython, or have you any experience with that? I haven't tested in MicroPython yet, but it would be nice to do it, yeah, to test it. You, say, you were talking about IoT, so I think that's oh, yes, perfect. Yes. Match. I heard about um, MicroPython back in, in Python Brazil last October. And it's on my to-do list. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, I was working on, on a new module. It's the Wolf SSL module for wrap our SSL library. So you can use it when you don't have the SSL module available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Or if you want to get advantage of some features that we have that may speed up the process. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you for the questions. Maybe if you will have some more, you can, you can talk to Moises afterwards, after lunch. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for a great speech. Thanks, Eva. Thanks.